All the way from the start, I can feel it in my heart, like All the way from the start Hey, what's going on out there? I'm Sean Devine. Hope you all are doing well. Today, I've got a new video where we're going to talk about how great mixing is in the small details. So the seemingly small details that uh, collectively, they make a really big difference in terms of where your mix ends up. You may have a good mix, but in order to get it to great, you're going to have to make a lot of tweaks that to the average ear or maybe to... Uh, even you all or myself individually may not make that much of a difference, but they end up making a huge difference. So I've got a session open here. This is just an example. It is a bit more on the extreme side of the example because there were a lot of tweaks made to this mix, but I want to just show you, these are the project alternatives. So this is over the course of like 11 or 12 days and each of these days, after about, I think probably the 2nd of April, these are all just days of small tweaks and kind of getting things right or hearing something that maybe wasn't sounding right in my car or on earbuds or another speaker system. Maybe I just heard something after the fact with fresh ears that wasn't working. So these are all these little changes up until you know yesterday where I actually had what was the finished mix. So again, this is a bit extreme, but just to show you that uh, even when the mix is, is done, like on the 2nd of April is when this is really finished, there's gonna be a lot of small tweaks after to get it to the point that it needs to be. Now, again, that may be one day of tweaks. I did this over a long period because I'm working on a lot of different mixes at the same time. And this is actually my track, so it's not, like I had to sit here in one day and kind of finish it. But that is again, just to show you the amount of little tweaks and things that are going into this. As an example, in this EQ here, this is uh, on the vocal. I was hearing just this resonant sort of uh, bump up here at 2K that just was sounding a little bit harsh to me only on certain speakers. And it took me a couple days afterwards to really pick up on it. So I just came in here and I had to make that little, you know, one dB deduction, which again, it doesn't seem like a big deal. Gating noise out of all the individual tracks. Again, on one track, probably not gonna be a big deal, but using the gate on all the tracks with noise that collects over time makes a huge, huge difference. This is the EQ for my reverb. So some of you may just be rolling off lows and highs. I'm going in and I'm finding the individual uh, curves in the mids and the low mids, high mids that are uh, particularly resonant. So that's another thing, you know, really taking the time to precisely EQ your reverbs is going to help them sit better in the mix, make it to where your vocal is uh, sounding the way it should and not too washy, but also having the right character to it in terms of the reverb space. Automation. Another huge thing that uh, is a lot of small little things, pans here, you know, increasing volume here and there. I've got a lot of muting. So whenever these instruments end, they were hanging out into the verse, which some of you have asked about like 808s and stuff like that. And they start to clash with whatever element comes after that. And so I just have a mute on to turn those things off. Another thing I want to touch on is that, you know, you all are seeing the YouTube format of me mixing in, you know, 30 minutes maybe or less for a verse or for a vocal or whatever it may be. And, um, you know, that is kind of just me going off of my intuition, but you've got to understand that, you know, I've been doing this for a very long time. So I've got, you know, 10 plus years of experience. So I'm able to make those decisions quickly and on the fly, but that is not going to be the finished mix. I'm still going to be going back and making tweaks and doing everything that we're talking about here in terms of just maximizing and making sure I'm getting a great mix versus just one that is the essential core balance. And some of you are gonna have to experiment a lot more that, than that, most of you will. I had to do that too. You're gonna make some mistakes, that's okay. But again, just be realistic about you know how long it's gonna take to do mixing and, and how you know you're not gonna get it perfect the first time. It's okay to have some revisions. It's okay to have to go back and fix some things. I do it all the time. You're never gonna be so good at mixing. There's not these tweaks to make. 
So some of you are going to ask, well, how do I know when I'm done with the mix? You know, you don't want to get in a pattern of these small tweaks that never end. That can happen. Uh, I do have a video that talks about how to know when you're done and to not overdo this. So if you want to watch that, check it out. But the key is just knowing in your intuition, okay, there's some things that I need to get right here. Something's not right. I think that's the biggest key is being honest with yourself to listen and then recognize what is not working. So it, it may sound good on your speakers. It may not sound good somewhere else. And you got to identify, okay, well, what's the problem there? Is there a problem? You know, maybe these speakers are just crap, but you still got to understand that people are listening on crap speakers. So you don't want that to make your mix sound bad. You know, if it sounds just as bad as everything else, but it's still you know, sounds the way it should versus it sounds worse than everything else on those bad speakers. That's a problem. So you want to be consistent, being honest. What can I do to make this work across everybody's listening environment to the best of your abilities and to the best of those playback settings? All right, y'all. So just a quick video, again, emphasizing the small decisions that you're making in the mix, either during the process, the main mixing process, or afterwards, tweaking things and getting it right. I can guarantee you that the best mixers out here great mixers are doing this they are going back and making a lot of small tweaks that compiled make a really big difference and that is what you're hearing ultimately in a great mix versus a good mix is someone who is conscientious enough to pay attention to these small little details that the average listener may not notice individually unless you pointed it out but trust me it is making a huge difference across the entire mix once it all comes together. And that's what mixing is all about is these tiny little tweaks here and there. We've got, you know, tons of space in this frequency spectrum to manipulate and process and blend and, you know, just make it more exciting. So there's a ton of options and variables and a lot of mixing is just knowing, okay, what's the problem? How can I fix this? Or, you know, what can I do to uh, accentuate something in this mix and do it across the entire uh, blend of the session so hope this helps show if you have any questions about the small details that make up a great mix feel free to leave a comment below if you have some suggestions for the viewers out there for little things that you go back and do i'd love to hear about them i know other people on the channel would as well so feel free to leave that comment if you learn anything in the video please like subscribe and consider sharing we'll talk to you soon i didn't say nothing but man you know it i had this deep down in my heart forever the ones who burn me man this ties us up light it up